Are we headed for economic collapse? Well, markets have taken a knock. Uh, cryptocurrency has collapsed. Uh, energy and food prices are skyrocketing. And all this is happening in the midst of frightening heat episodes. Uh, last night, we experienced the hottest uh, night ever recorded in the UK. And that's pretty frightening. Uh, some would say that we are experiencing an apocalyptic nightmare, uh, beset on all sides by the demons of economics, uh, biology, uh, geography, and demography. It's a field day for religious fundamentalists. Uh, they would say we've invoked the wrath of God and he's now punishing us. Others would admit that times are tough, but we've been through all this many times before, and we will emerge even stronger. It won't even be that bad. The inexorable march of technology will see us through. Well, I must say, I'm quite excited to be looking at both sides of this one. It couldn't be much more important. So let's begin by those who say, uh, yes, we are headed for economic collapse, the pessimists. Well, in 1972, a prominent book uh, predicted a lot of this. It was called uh, The Limits to Growth. Uh, it was put together by an organization called the Club of Rome and argued that a combination of uh, resource consumption, food shortages, pollution, and uh, many of the other problems associated with the enormous growth of the world population meant that the growth of the past could not continue and would come to a screeching and unpleasant halt. <laughs> It, of course, it was widely condemned and ignored by politicians, as they always do, and other academics. But for many, it's now turning out to have been prescient. I myself uh, wrote a small tract uh, some years ago entitled, Lower Your Expectations. Uh, I argued that meeting our increasing expectations for social care and treatment, especially of the elderly, uh, uh, through the National Health Service, and at a time where, when we're committing to do everything we can to defeat climate change, would be increasingly difficult, if not impossible. And all of this has uh, uh, been happening at a time when interest rates would eventually go up as investors tire of buying the bonds of nations unlikely to ever repay their debts. So uh, I figured that that would make it even tougher for governments to fund social programs. I simply could not see that the growth track of recent years could continue much longer. My concerns, like those of the book mentioned above, now seem to be coming to pass. Hate to brag about it, but uh, I think I got that right. The frightening truth is that we are reaping the fruit of decades of financial mismanagement, principally by governments and central banks. Decades of cheap money has been attractive, especially to the politicians of the time, but is unsustainable in the long run. Interest rates are now heading sharply upward. Servicing enormous government debt will soon become a back-breaking burden. As a, uh, as a consequence of that, we face the prospect that we will no longer be able to provide anywhere near the kind of public services that the electorate has come to expect. We'll be using all our money just to pay interest on the debt. Massive unrest cannot be far away. Democratic institutions, I'm afraid, are simply ill-equipped to cope with enormous and protracted problems of the sort that we're confronting now. Uh, no politician wants to give bad news to his constituents, and in any case, none is willing to undergo any commitment of resources of the sort needed to tackle these problems. They say they will, but they won't. Uh, elections make them all short-term thinkers. It does not look good. Okay, well, that's the uh, pessimistic, the negative side. What about those who are uh, a little bit more optimistic about the future? Those who say, no, we're not headed for any sort of economic collapse. Well, to begin with, uh, there are many experts uh, who uh, are predicting a recession in, in the developed world, but nothing worse. Uh, they argue that we have well-established and proven tools and techniques to confront problems of this sort, as we have done in the past, we will use them again. Uh, the enormous onslaught of technology seen in recent years will come to our rescue. It's doing that now. Automation will relieve the labor shortage, 
Uh, major discoveries in the provision of energy are inevitable, including the possibility of nuclear fusion. Uh, and highly sophisticated deep data computer systems, algorithms, and uh, inquiry uh, procedures will help us solve the most complicated and pressing problems of all areas of economic activity. A bit of turbulence, perhaps, but definitely not collapse. Well, after those two spirited viewpoints, what's my take? I'm afraid I'm pessimistic. Uh, for some years, we've been facing daunting economic problems, but been able to, as they say, kick the can down the road. Uh, that's coming to an end as central banks have no choice but to raise interest rates to check growing inflationary pressures. The Bank of England said they take that seriously and that will come before everything else. Interest rates to service sovereign debt will be increasing substantially and that will inevitably require major cutbacks in public services. The public isn't going to like that. And all of this has been brought crashingly to the fore by the impact of covid and also the uh, Ukraine war and its effect on energy and food supply. Uh, furthermore, the financial and economic pressures noted above will make the European Union's defense of its catastrophic common currency arrangements untenable. The euro may have to be abandoned and the carnage just from that event will be eye-watering. There is also a notable lack of the kind of global cooperation needed to deal with problems of the sort. The UK is constantly battling with the European Union in the aftermath of Brexit. The USA, especially with the legacy of Trump, has shown uh, strong signs of isolationism, seems to be withdrawing from its global role. Uh, China is being seen as increasingly dangerous and a threat and nobody's friend. Uh, and it's uh, becoming especially belligerent as its economy does less well. The kind of world cooperation needed to defeat enormous problems of this sort is thus unlikely to be forthcoming. Parenthetically, it may also be a time for the Brits to begin to question the extravagant and inappropriate lifestyle of our royal family, funded as it is by the taxpayer. Well, I'm afraid it's hard to, hard to be optimistic. As Betty Davis famously said, fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> Well, I hope you like that uh, and have a look at a few similar uh, videos that uh, I'm uh, linking uh, there for you. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, subscribe, please, and bye-bye.